Bezrat Hashem, we know that the Creator sent us down to earth to this godly mission to reveal the light of our souls to as many as we can. And the Creator Himself planted inside of us a godly soul, a heavenly portion from above, for us to use through the walk in the valley of shadows of death, meeting people on earth, finding ourselves struggling in certain situations in life is a challenge. It's not easy. And the main thing that happens to a person who his soul is shining is that he becomes sensitive to the truth. And the godly light of the Creator that is shining within himself is forcing him to desire the truth with all his heart. And when you walk in the world that is called by the Zohar Kadosh, Alma de Shikra, the world of lies, the world of confusions, you find it challenging to face so much lie, so many scams, so many situations that are pulling and trying to pull you yourself as well out of that path of truth and to drop that holy work that you started. And it's challenging. It's challenging because some of those faces who are standing in front of you, it's not enough for them that they're not strong enough to shine the light of truth. They also want to take the crown of holiness and purity to themselves while being disconnected from the root of their own souls, claiming to be religious, claiming to be strict, super ultra orthodox, claim to hold the treasure of legacy and tradition while being totally disconnected from honesty, from loyalty, from goodness, from kindness, from the real heavenly shape of our soul. And as physical people with only flesh and bones to cover their poor souls that are not really expressing their godly light and actually just making the world dark with their physical attachment to it, basing their theories on fears and on their lack of true confidence in God, just trying to scam the world and to take advantage of situations and people while pretending to be godly and pure and to lead our people to safe place while not knowing the path to their own selves, to their souls by themselves. Great poverty is the share of those people. And when you, as a real soldier of God, as a real child of God, as a real slave of God, as a real messenger of the light, in any aspect that you choose and you find proper to serve and to channel His light to the world, finding yourself standing in front of liars, finding yourself confronting people who does not have the dignity to admit the truth of their lackings, of their mental poverty, of their lack of knowledge, is a very challenging situation in life. Because for the person who wants to attach himself to the truth, the desire to express his kindness and his love is so great 
that he finds it very, very hard to be strong and to fight against those people who are pretending to follow the light and are actually spreading darkness among our siblings. Many of us finding ourselves that we must fight and that we must provoke and rebuke and fight and argue with people who are not only that are not willing to surrender to the goodness of the Creator and to be kind and nice, they're also forcing the weak souls to surrender to their own fears and to their government and to their power, basing their kingships on fear and terror and anger and all kinds of darkness. But it's written, and for us, the Torah is the guiding line for our lives, is the clear message from God on how we should join our true good forces to be the army of God under the real kingship of the true Messiah, that he will be the one who will shine the light of the kingship of King David. And we should join that army of King David, Tzva David. And the army of King David was built by 400 people that King David met in the desert when he ran away from his enemies, his family, and his own people who were chasing him and blaming him in false claims, false blames. And he had to run away and to hide himself in the caves, in the pits of the desert, in the darkness of the nights. And he found those 400 broken people who've been rejected and exiled from their communities. And he found those scarred and broken-hearted people, bitter heart people, that a spark of honesty and truthfulness kept on shining within their own souls. And they joined him because they recognized in him the godly power of goodness. And King David himself, he was also a poet. He was also a warrior. He was also a king. He was also a great scholar. He was a hunter. He was a person who knew how to appreciate life how to enjoy food, how to enjoy music, how to speak with women and how to speak with wise people, how to respect elders and how to be a shepherd of the softest animal of his herd. He was able to look at the view and to praise God for the sunsets and for the sunrise, for the beautiful sky, the clouds, and as well to wake up midnight and to cry for the foundation of the temple and to go on crazy wars into the enemy lines and to fight like a dangerous warrior holding his bow and arrow and his sword and not to go back until the last hater will die. His soldiers, broken-hearted people, joined him because they found similarity to him. They found a reflection of their own souls in him and they joined forces with him. And we should do the same. We should not give up on our honesty, on our loyalty, on the true nature of our souls, on the true light of our souls, of our neshamot, of the godly light that is treasured inside of us in the shape of our souls, in that selem eloka that is treasured inside of us 
And we must allow that godliness to shine while not forgetting who we are and what the true nature of our soul is. No one can tell you who you are. You can only, by being truthful in your journey, find your real true self and go all the way to spread the light of goodness that is treasured inside of you. By being so honest and truthful, you're carving your way to find that King David of our generation and to join his army and to finish the war and winning the battle to his side and crowning our Lord, the Creator, Hashem Elokei Israel Melech, the Creator, the God of Israel, the real King of the universe, and to reveal the true potential of our creation to all His loved ones, to the real true children of the Creator, the chosen ones who always loved Him and were waiting for His grace to appear. May our journey and our task be accepted and appreciated to his eyes and warmly will hug us with his arms of grace and power and bring us all as one, as one person with one heart to his temple that in that day will be called the house of prayer to all nations, to all people. And may all our prayers, all of them, of all those ones who've been left behind and been forgotten will be answered, will be accepted, will be appreciated and will bring out sweet fruits to the world. Amen.